Hi, it's me again, Gab from One Code Camp, and in this video, we'll be answering a popular programming practice question in the Fibonacci sequence. Now, the name sounds fancy, but the solution is actually very simple. So let's get to it. Okay, so before we start on the actual codes, let's discuss what a Fibonacci sequence is. So let's create a text file here. Let's just name this text.txt. And using the simple text file, I'm going to explain what a Fibonacci sequence is. So Fibonacci sequence is a behavior of numbers that is observed in nature. So essentially, it's a sum of the two preceding numbers. Of course, it will start with a zero right here, and then followed by a one. And after that, all of the num all, all of the next numbers will be just sums of these two preceding numbers. So zero plus one will be one. And then now this is the new term and the next digit will be the sum of these two. So one plus one will be two. And then the next is also the, the same, which will be two plus one. So that's going to be three. And then the next one will be the sum of these two. So that's five. And the next one will be the sum of these two, which is eight. So usually these are Fibonacci sequence code challenges determines which digit will appear on the nth term. So let's try to continue this. And 8 plus 13, that's going to be 21. And then we add this, that's going to be 34. And so on and so forth. So with our Fibonacci sequence, we want to know, uh, maybe we give it a value of, let's say, 8. So that means that we're going to, we need to know, um, which number appears on the eighth position in our Fibonacci sequence. So let's count that. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So if we get an input of eight, then it should print out the number 13 because 13 is the eighth number in the Fibonacci sequence. And of course, there are uh, ways to check this because the Fibonacci sequence has very um, fixed outcome. So now that we know what it is, we can get to the coding part of our discussion. So for that, let's create our files. I'm going to leave this text file right here. Maybe we can use it in the future. But for now, I'm also going to create my index.html file and then my boilerplate. So that's going to be an exclamation point. And I'm going to change the title to Fibonacci sequence. And then, of course, I need to link my JavaScript file to my HTML file. So that's going to be a script and that SRC right there. Right now, we don't have our JavaScript file just yet. So let's go ahead and create that. This will be the app.js. All right. And going back to our index.html, in the source port right here, we have to um, add our app.js file. And then in our app.js file, let's just print out something in the console so that uh, we'll know for sure if the connection was made successfully. Let's just type in here, hello, one coders. Oops, I mistyped that. There we go. Okay, and let's open this in our live server by clicking, right clicking on the index.html file and selecting open with live server. All right, so here is our live server. I'm going to right click on this and click inspect. And all right, after elements, I'm going to click on console and there's our message right there saying hello one coders. That means that the connection between our JavaScript file and index.html file was successful. So now we can proceed with the codes. So I'm going to maximize my Visual Studio code just for now. We don't need to see it as we go in our browser. And I'm also going to delete this console.log print right here because we just use that to ensure the connection between our files. So this is where we do the sequence code. So let's say, let's give it a note and saying generating um, Fibonacci series up to the nth nth term there we go just term all right okay so since we will generate the series or the set of numbers up to the nth term we need to know first what that nth term is and that's going to be our user input so i'm going to put a note here saying this is the user input 
So whatever their input is, let's store it in a variable. And let's just name this term. Since this is the nth term, whatever that is. And since this will be an input from the user, we need it to be a prompt. And in the prompt, it will have a string saying, enter the number of terms. There we go. And of course, since this is a prompt, it's going to return a value of a string. And we can't do mathematical um, processes or, uh, yeah, we can't do math on a string because those are just a string of characters. So what we can do is convert this to an integer. And for that, I'm going to cut this first and change this to an, to an integer. So that's parse, whoops, parse, int. And then inside it is where I will paste that prompt that I did earlier. All right, so now I have a variable that stores my user input. All right, after that, we need to initialize the first two terms that we will use, just like what we did during our explanation, wherein the first term zero was given and also the second term one was given. And from then on, it's just a matter of addition. So let's create that first number. So that will be a zero. Let's store it in a let. Since we will be using this variable again to uh, move forward in our sequence. So this will be our n1 or the first ever digit that's going to be zero and then i will also create another variable i'm just going to name this n2 and this will be the second digit and that is why i named this n it will be number one and then number two so the second number will be zero and lastly we also want to create a variable that will hold the next term that we've generated or these are the terms that are just formed after adding the first two uh, i mean the preceding two numbers all right so we have that now and then let's create a loop that will generate that sequence for us so let's create a for loop first there we go and of course, we need a counter for this. That's going to be let and n or i equals 1. And then i equals less than or equal to term right there. Because we want our Fibonacci series to cycle through this loop for however many ter terms the user wants us to create. And then lastly, we of course need to increment that i so that it can um, break out of that loop. All right. And then of course we need to print out that first digit first, which is zero or something that is stored in n1. So to print that out, we of course need our never ending console.log. And it's gonna print out that n1 right there. And then the next term will, of course, be just the sum of these two, of n1 and n2. All right. So then let's type in here that the next term, there we go, will just be the sum of the first two digits that we used. So what's the sum of those first two digits? That's just going to be, of course, the first digit that we declared as n1 and then we're going to add it to n2, which is, um, which I think aligns with our naming convention. And then next, we want to move forward in our sequence. So what we're going to do is we're going to reassign the value of n1 to move forward with our series of terms. And what is the next term after that n1? It is, of course, n2. There we go. And we're going to do the same for N2 as well. We want it to move forward into our series. So that's going to be N2 equals the next term. There you go. And 
Uh, maybe it'll be better if we print out a title for this. So to do that, let's um, create a console right here, console.log. And it's going to be, um, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be like the header uh, for, but just for the console. And that's going to be Fibonacci uh, sequence. And then there we go. Let's try running this and debug if we encounter it any error. So going back on our live server. So there it is. We already have a prompt. Let me close this first. Then reload. And let's see the nth term. Which, uh, what, which one do we want to see? Maybe we'd like to see the fifth term. So that's going to be one, two, three, four, five. It should give us a value of three. So let's give this a value of five and check the results in our inspector and then go to console. And there we go. The Fibonacci series was generated up to that nth term. Let's count that. This zero will be our one and we have two number ones. So that's going to be one, two, three, four, and five. So we generated the Fibonacci sequence up to the fifth term. So let's try to reload this again. And if we give it a value of 8, then it generated the sequence up to the 8th number, which is 13. So let's track, um, double checking this with the one that we created on our own. So that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. There it is. So now we know that our code works and that is how we generate the Fibonacci sequence up to the nth term so i hope you learned a lot from this lesson and that is the solution to the fibonacci sequence coding challenge using javascript and we only utilize the for loop in here so you can try different solutions maybe you can try a while loop instead or or maybe you can try the recursive approach in this code solutions but this is a solution that is beginner friendly and also it Right now, it doesn't print it yet to our web page, just on our console, but maybe we can tackle that for future videos. And we hope that you will enjoy this video and also support us in the future videos that we will post. Thank you so much and have a great day.